Hey young guys, so welcome back to NZ Micro Outlet Customs. So basically I'm just going to do a quick review on having this SIG weld 3-in-1 um, welder. It's the um, the weld skill 185 um, welder inverter. <laughs> it's the MIG TIG and stick. All I've used it for is MIG. Um, I haven't used it for anything else. The only reason I thought about it is because I just sitting here changing the reel over um, so yeah it's been absolutely awesome I've rebuilt um, a 24 sorry 25 Studebaker with it done all the metal work and everything with that at 24 Dodge just rebuilt all the body and everything for that um, and paint it and whatever um, just done a 65 Impala did all the metal work and everything on the body and that um, just actually done finished doing some Mark II Jag doors um, and we just buried, finished rebuilding a uh, a door for an old Nissan Patrol for a drive from the 80s. They had to remake a door skin for that and basically just done any other fab work that I needed to do that was associated with those cars like building, had to build a dolly for um, the dodge to turn the body upside down so I could work on it um, underneath because I've rebuilt the whole bottom of the body it was completely rotted out didn't look bad for a start off but once we got it stripped down and blasted down and whatever yeah the whole bottom was just rotten so yeah that's I've had this since early 2021 about February I think um, I did a, a bit of a review about eight months after that um, in November 2021 it's now almost what are we June almost July not quite July yet um, 2023 so yeah this is basically never missed a beat the only issue I've ever had is the odd time and I think it's just dust and dirt and a bit of crap from me obviously grinding and welding and then sanding body filler and paint and whatever else has just been the odd time I've gone to pull the trigger and it hasn't worked and just came with a bit of a thump or a bit of a blowout with some air and why well, it's gone again so it's probably just been dirt and shit got in there from not using it for a while and then go pick it up and then it doesn't work so you just give it a bit of a thump and a bit of a blowout with the air and why well, it's gone again that's probably been the only weird issue I've had I haven't had to pull anything apart to fix it haven't had to replace anything apart from you know obviously just normal consumables I think I put probably half probably not half a dozen but i put two or three tips on i've never replaced their end yet the shield um yeah and just putting welding wire through it and gas never missed the beat really um it's been perfect really can't complain um i would like to use the tig and the stick side of it i need to buy a tig torch to use it but if i ever do that i'll probably end up just buying a a uh, stand iron tig. Um, the the stick would be handy for maybe for something else, but it's it's not something you use. But I've got got it there if I need it, and I've got welding electrodes here if I need them. <laughs> um, for anything at some point, I'm probably not likely to. Um, but yeah, this has been great. So done all the panel work plus a bit of I wouldn't say light fab. I don't know anything really heavy with it, but just a bit of light fab here and there, writing out bits of steel and whatever, making bits and pieces and tools and just any anything I'd needed to make to form parts or whatever, um, or repair. I've done a lot of repair work on the um, Studebaker stuff for not so much body panels, but just all sorts of weird things. Had to remake brackets and all sorts of things with that and build up bits that are worn away um, like little um, mechanical joints for like um, some of the linkages for carburetors and stuff like that like I welded up a whole bit of little bits and pieces like that and with a ball with little balls because it was some of that stuff was hard to find and I spent you know, half an hour there you know there and there just I just build stuff up and shape it and Put it back together. Um, you know, made 
door handles and all sorts of stuff with it. So yeah, it's been great. Never missed a beat really. Can't complain. Um, I'm actually about to get a, uh, in the next couple of days, a 1940s, I'm not a year, which sure year it is, um, when exactly it was made, but it was World War II GMC truck duck, one of those amphibious truck duck things that they used to carry the troops from the boats onto the beaches and wherever they had to go inland um, and then cut backwards and forwards supplies and wounded soldiers and all sorts of stuff so I'm going to be working on one of those very shortly. Um, it should be here if it's not here in the next day or two it'll be sometime at the weekend. Um, so yeah that'll be coming up too so it'll be a whole heap of fab work on that. I may end up buying another one um, or something else very similar um, and I'll probably stick with this brand because I've had no issues with it and it's been great. So it's been two and a half years of just solid fab and repair work and whatever. You know there's been odd times where it's been a couple of months and I haven't used it because I've been doing whole heap of like just body work and paint work and stuff like that but every now and again you got to drag it out because something you know you're putting stuff together and something just doesn't quite fit right or gel right or whatever or something's just not 100% so you've had to cut and modify and whatever and put it back together and you know and then you mightn't touch it again for you a bit longer but there's times where I'm just using it every day for months on the end weeks on the end yeah so it's great can't complain, cannot complain. So if you if you want a welder and you're either buying a new one or a second one and you come across one of these 185s, MIG TIG stick, yeah, grab it. If it's in good nick or if it's brand new, yeah, you, you can't go wrong. <laughs> it's been great, easy to set up. Um, you know, easy to set up. Follow the, the chart in here, I'll bring you around. There's a chart in here, I just I flicked it back off again because it was too noisy. So there's a chart in here for all your different like your um, material thicknesses and your wire thicknesses and obviously whatever else you're, whatever you're running. So you got your MIG, your lift TIG and your stick and it just, it get, you just have to w read through and follow the instructions, you know, mild steel and, and whatever stainless and aluminium and it gives you your wire speed and whatever and your voltage and and whatever, um, you know, and you can just flip this back on. So that's your voltage, and that's your wire speed. That won't work because I haven't got the gas and everything hooked on at the moment, but yeah. Um, so that's your wire speed, and your gas, and your, and your voltage, and this here is your arc control. Typical. Every time you want to freaking talk, <laughs> thanks up. That's your art control. Normally you'll run it in the green. Um, it's got on here, but yeah, like it, it, it gives you a rough, rough idea where you should be running it. Um, yeah, and depending on what you're doing, whether you're just working on, say, one mil panel steer or 20 gauge or 19 gauge or whatever that is, or you're working on something a little bit heavier, if you so you might be in, a, in an area where you might be welding two or three pieces together, layered together, you know, basically like spot welding, like, I don't know, like a frame and a door jam or something like that. If you're repairing that sort of stuff, you might just want to come in here and just wind your voltage up a little bit and wire your wire, spare you up a little, a little bit and just carry on. And then you can come back along and just wind it back down to wherever it was before. The digital readout's good because you can, you know, exactly. So, you know, oh shit, you know, it runs really good at, 14.6 and, and whatever on your wire speed. I'm trying to think what I normally run that at about, about four and a half or or five or whatever it is on my wire speed. I can't remember. I'll know when I freaking start welding again. But yeah, it's normally somewhere around about there and you yeah, you get that two or three thicknesses, you might just want to wind it up a little bit where you join them together when you're like sort of butt welding them to get or not butt welding. Um, over overlaying them like on a seam or something like that. Wind the voltage up a little bit, burn all your spot welds in, dial it back and start butt welding back together. So yeah, I'll probably will end, possibly end up buying another one. Um, 
I'm not 100% sure because um, I've got, um, I can't remember if I said it before or not, but I've got a World War II um, amphibious truck, duck, GMC based truck chassis, 6x6 six six, um, amphibious boat duck thing. They used to use them for bringing the troops from the boats and onto shore um, and then obviously carting supplies and then they, they drive way up into wherever they were fighting obviously close to drop the supplies off and back with wounded soldiers and whatever. So yeah, I may have, have to buy another one because I'll be working inside the thing all the time and if I'm working on other stuff out here doing fab and metal work, the last thing I want to be doing is trying to drag a water from down inside it back out all the time so I may end up buying another one and I've got no qualms on buying another one so this is a, some of the doors I've just finished doing metal work on um, and obviously done all the, I've done all the filler work and they're in the first stage of prime I haven't blocked them or anything but this is some doors I've done 65 and part doors I've rebuilt all the corners and bits and pieces so yeah and then did all the fab and metal work on this here plus a 24 dodge and the, the, the body is 65 so i rebuilt all these guards and fixed brackets and all sorts of stuff for this thing like i made all this convertible top with that and these and fabbed all that stuff up with that you know just it's been great it's never missed a beat you know apart from probably a dirty trigger every now and again which I had to get a blow out and, a, and we thump around it's worked perfectly um, so yeah there'll be a whole heap more fab work and everything coming up um, and also if you're in New Zealand and you're looking for welding gas go see these guys Core Gas um, these guys are, are freaking awesome um, I get all my welding gas through these guys auction and acetylene plus mig gas um, so I run a small bottle which I've got to get refilled and the big bottle so I normally run the big bottle um, all the time from these guys and when it runs out I just flick the small bottle on and um, yeah I just give them a call and they just come and slot this one over so yeah absolutely awesome cool gas Way cheaper than I've found than anybody else around. Obviously priced around, but yeah, get a hold of these guys. If you're looking for gas and you're in New Zealand, bring these guys. But yeah, I cannot say a bad thing about this Sig Weld, Weld School 185 Welder. It's awesome, and I will probably end up with another one shortly, or something very similar. Um, you know, or we'll shop around see what we we get. I've got no qualms buying a different brand, but yeah, this has been great. So so far, all I've done is put consumables on it, tips, whatever, wire and gas, and I've haven't had to haven't had to do your thing to it really. It's been great. Anyway, we'll catch you later on. So yeah, two and a half years and basically haven't had an issue that's worked perfectly all the time do a blow out and a clean out every now and again with the dust and dirt and shit and then she just keeps rocking throw another reel of wire at it and another bottle of gas so yeah thanks for watching um please like share and subscribe if you want to see any of the videos on some of the stuff that i've worked on building with this thing um yeah you're more than welcome to go have a look Plenty, plenty of stuff out there like that. Rebuilding on the bottom of that dodge was a was a big task. A lot of welding in that. You know, a huge rebuilt the whole bottom of the body on this 24 um, dodge open top. Um, basically, very similar to the Studi. Um, it was black and green at the end of it. It was black and green for a start off, but yeah, it was in basically a I wouldn't say a barn find, but it had been in the family for a long time. Sat in the shed for years, dragged it out. Bought it down here for a bit of a, basically, strip it down and clean it up and repaint it and it turned into a, just a major rebuild. <laughs> she was pretty rotten. Um, never thought it was that bad, but yeah, once we got it stripped down and cleaned down and body, body the body sandblasted, the whole bottom four to five, six inches was just 
garbage. <laughs> I re basically rebuilt a whole lot of metal on it. Um, so yeah, and then it's done all that, and it's, all that's redone a whole mini heap of metal work on a 65 impala, plus that, plus the other stuff, plus many other brackets and bits and pieces. So yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, if you need welding gas, go see the boys at Cool Gas. If you're in New Zealand, yep, go see these guys, they'll look after you. Cool Gas, New Zealand.